You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Teach us your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in it. Show us your precepts and show us your laws and your ordinances that we may live in fruitful lands. Open our eyes to what you instruct, the things that you command, the principles of your word, the covenant that guarantees sustainable results. Open our eyes to see them and open our hearts to know and understand them that we may walk in it just like our fathers did walk in your ways and did the things that were right before you and inherited the promise. We ask that we also walk in the footsteps of our fathers that we might be co-partakers of the blessings and the inheritance and the promise. May none of us run like one beating about the wind or beating about the bush, but may we become a people of order, a people of divine order. Make us people who are rooted in covenant people who are not easily swayed or broken in jesus name we pray have your seat let me start quickly on the the subject we are still dealing on is the subject of covenant the covenant of wealth and uh, there are or there is only one reason, or maybe if you want, two reasons why people fail. Only one reason or two. I can make it two. Why people actually fail abysmally. If you see struggles in your life, I would show you why it's there. And I'll also show you what you will do to remove it from your life. Um, God will help you this night if you listen carefully. You see, the thing is that knowledge, when it has been accumulated and accumulated and accumulated and is not applied, is a total waste. You know, the scripture talk about people who are always learning but are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Do you know what the Bible say will happen to such people? He said they will not make any progress. He said their folly will be visible to all. We are dealing on this issue of wealth because it's a critical issue. This is the only issue in the scripture that there's no prayer point for. This is the issue, the only subject I've seen in the Bible that has no prayer. Everything that governs it are laws and principles and covenants. The reason few go up and many stay down is the indiscipline to obey covenants. The unwillingness, the indiscipline to respect laws. The first is the unwillingness to learn or to have knowledge about them. The secondly is the indiscipline to apply them when you now know them. Which is why a man who is diligent to know and to apply what he knows, give him time, he would, he would become so great. A man who is not concerned about knowledge and who is not concerned about applying what he knows, he's going nowhere. You can predict how he will end. 
because principles are the greatest thing that controls the world. The whole world, everything is governed by it. And unfortunately, a lot of people do not respect principles. The principles are organized in such a way that you can't break them. If you attempt at breaking them, they actually have the power to break you. Gravity will never change, no matter what you do to it. And no matter how you feel about gravity, it will never change. Everything that goes up will come down. Law. Hmm? Hello? No matter how you try to plant a mango tree expecting a cashew fruit, it will never work. Principle. No matter how you try, you will never be able to change the laws of motion. Everything is at the state of rest until an external force is asserted on it. It's a given. It's a law. Do you know the guys who control the universe? They are men who respect laws. The ones who don't respect laws, life treats them harshly. The ones who trivialize laws, who take laws casual, who play around with it. If you see, anywhere you see pain in your life, stop complaining about the pain. Pause. Check what you are disrespecting. Hello? If you eat food now, eh? eat rice and stew, you put it through your mouth, the thing goes inside, and it will pass through certain process. To eat food, you need to get it into your mouth. Is that okay? The thing will travel through your esophagus and go into your stomach. And where will it enter? Your intestines and all that, your digestive system. Respiratory system will not do digestive systems work. Any day you attempt that your respiratory organs or system should do the job of a digestive created this whole world where the words of God and the words of God are the principles of God. The words of God are the laws of God. God created this whole world and created laws to govern everything. Look around you. What is in this world that is not governed by principle? It's not possible for you to be a male and have female glands. Hello, you are a man and you have a woman's private organ. It's not possible. It's not possible. Laws. And the thing about law is that when you know them, then the outcome of anything is predictable. Do you know where you have missed it? Let me tell you. Where you have missed it, and where human beings have missed it, is in this area. When you sit down now to begin to understand the world the way I have understood it, you will see that your problems will begin to reduce. Your crisis will begin to reduce. This world is not for those who run around the most. It's for people who actually sit down to study how everything is created to operate. When you see a man trying to have an affair with his fellow man what he's doing is going anti-law and you can't get results there are consequences for doing that a man says he's going to have canal knowledge with his fellow man okay even if that will not take you to hell let me even assume that will not take you to hell i'm not saying it will not to but let me say there's no consequence of hell for that one if you want to produce children imagine you have a man and a man who are married and every morning they are confessing that they, uh, their babies are coming. How will the baby come? There are laws of reproduction. If you bring a man and a fellow man and put them together and say they should get married and give birth, that will never happen. No matter the prayer you pray, there's no anointing that can break that yoke. Do you know?
know why the devil is winning over most of you? He's making you obstinate towards laws. Yeah, that's what you are living by. When you enter a vehicle, it's not just a metal you enter. You entered laws. You entered a system. And every system is controlled by laws. You entered a system. So you enter a car now. You want to drive forward and you put the car on reverse. You can't go forward. You'll be going backward. It's a law. There are laws of automobiles. You enter an automobile, a, 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 a car, and you want to fly. It can't fly. It doesn't have the dynamics of flight in it. If you want to fly, you need to get an automobile that has aerodynamic futures. Like airplane can do that one. Let me tell you something. I'm doing some journey across Africa. I know the problem of this continent. Whenever they bring you power, move, take, you are in a hurry to be excited. When they bring you teachings on principles, you are angry. You don't want to hear that one. That is what is perpetuating our poverty. Because we don't want to know the truth. And the scripture says that truth that you know that makes you free. The Western world is ahead of you because, see, they don't shout like you shout. They don't fall under anointing like you fall under anointing. Nothing is wrong with it, though. There's a place for power. I'm doing African tour, and the program is Kingdom and Power Conference. Why am I doing that, too? Because kingdom deals with the principal side. Power deals with the supernatural side. So I'm combining both. Because what most of you know is just one side of it, which is just power, flow, move, and all that. You will do that from now till the kingdom come. You don't use power to cook your food. When you want to cook, there are laws that control your gas. If you, if you open your cylinder now and carry matches on it and put it inside where the gas is, explosion. But if you respect the laws that governs if you respect the laws that governs that system and lighten it the way the, the, the producer produced it, that same fire that can burn you, that same fire that can consume your house, will be giving you, will be cooking your food. I hope you know electricity can give you illumination. Electricity can charge your food. Electricity can, um, can uh, help you enjoy your air condition, enjoy your television. I hope you know that. Because there are laws that controls it. Anything you go contrary to the law of electricity, that same thing that should be helping you enjoy air condition, help you enjoy your, te- your refrigerator, help you enjoy your, your, your air condition, that same electricity can kill you. I don't know why you are not studying life. Why are you religious? Tell yourself, it's time to settle down. Tell yourself again, it's time to settle down. And understand principles. Say it yourself. Say it's time to settle down. And understand principles. Mm -hmm. Because you're going nowhere, sir, without it. As long as you're in this world, you're going nowhere without it. I don't care who taught you before me. Whatever they taught you, if it couldn't work for you, then you should be questioning, what have I not learned? When a pilot goes to school, what, what does he go to go and study? The laws of... If he enters a plane and begins to operate the plane as though he's operating a patient in the hospital, with a plane fly? Because the laws of medicine does not operate within the laws of the aircraft, within the environment of the aircraft. So the same applies to this issue of wealth. Do you want to be rich? Do you want to stop going broke? Do you want to stop going dried? Do you want to stop living in a dried land? I will show you what gets you out of it. I see a lot of believers who are... I don't do a lot of grad If you see me, I... You, you hardly see me here, dear, dear. The whole of today, for instance, you, I, I, I didn't cross the gate of my house. I'm inside. I'm acquiring. I want to be a rat race human being. You know, like a rolling stone that gathers no moss. They're everywhere. Everywhere. 
breaking the laws of life and he's breaking their life. Check why Africa's development is prolonged. Is lack of regard for laws. We break the law of time. Is destroying us. We break culture. We break principles. We break everything. Very, very, very rebellious continent. We break everything called laws. We break traffic lights. We break seat belt law. We are a law breaking continent. And you see the same thing in the church. This is where the headquarters is. Law breaking people. And you want to prosper. How? See what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 82 verse 1. There are people you will instruct from now to tomorrow. Let me tell you. You will instruct them. You see the rebellion. They will still do what they want to do. You have no hope, my friend. Just understand it. We are not trying to make you feel bad. We are telling you what is true. You have no hope. Watch now. This program we are doing is not in my schedule for this year. It was never in my schedule. We had a meeting. A man who I respect and honor came for the program and he was issuing some prophetic words in that meeting. I had my diary and my pen. I even have them written here. And I was taking note of everything he was saying when he was praying for me. I knelt down, he, play, he prayed, laid hands on me. That's one side of the equation. That's not all the side. There are prophetic instructions he gave, even down to when he said that this church should embark on a 40 days fast. And the team is by my spirit. I didn't go to edit it. I took note of it and I'm carrying the instruction out. Destruction is at the root of negligence to instruction. I don't know how you want your life to end, but I know how I want my own to end. Glorious and beautiful. If you want your own to end with suffering and pain and shame, when we are all done with the race, you will find out who told you the truth. Because I'm talking to you as a doctor who has diagnosed your problem. I know where you are and I know why you are where you are. You see that there are people you tell Everything you know will help them. As you're telling them, they are walking out of you, they are forgetting completely what you said. Or maybe they still remember, but they are not interested in doing it. Yet when you come back to me, it's with problems. Pastor, this one is happening. Pastor, that one is happening. Pastor, this one. But the reason you have not done it, the reason you have not got out of that, it's because of that thing you refuse to do. You have to go back to the book of Proverbs. Let me give you an assignment. Every one of you have to go back. Start reading Proverbs and start seeing what instruction looks like. And then if you read carefully, you'll see that there are, there, are, there, are, there are consequences for breaking instructions. And there are also benefits for keeping instructions. Okay, let, let me start on this note. Um, Psalms chapter 25 verse... Um, Psalms chapter 8, 2, rather. Let's read from verse 1. I'm going to read it. Don't worry. You see, there are two things primarily responsible for why people are poor, broke, why people are defeated and going through crisis. I'll tell you why. Ibu shall give African prophets some time to enjoy the massive loot they took from you. Because of ignorance, give them some time and then come towards this area. Let me now teach you. Samadimi actually left Nigeria. He's now in uh, the US. He's not coming back again. Because he saw, one time he was saying something, he said, ah, Have we not done all these things? Uh, power, miracles. We even have the largest churches in the world in Nigeria. Yet Nigeria is the world capital of poverty. Hey, it's shocking that Cameroon here with a population of about 29 million people. This one has 250, 29 million people with 10 regions. It's shocking that their currency is even stronger than this current, than this one. Stronger. You guys don't know where you are heading to. Your future has been cutted away. And politicians are in partnership with all your religious churches to destroy your lives. 
when it's time for election, they will come to the church and drop you Ghana, drop the bishops, Ghana must go and all that. And then you will only end up praying for them to become, you will never be able to ask intelligent questions. When you go to the U.S., you see that even people who are not Christians can engage their politicians in a one-on-one discussion. What are you bringing to the table? This thing you say you're going to do, how will you do it? Whereas in Nigeria, the day the governor is coming to your church is the day you are decorating everywhere, changing all the rock, changing everything. It's a mad nation you guys are living in. Very mad nation. Reckless nation. See, Psalm chapter 6, 82, verse 1. You know, the people you will tell, no matter what you tell them, I don't know why it's like that. No matter what you will tell them, no matter what you tell them, as you make your bed, so you will what? This is your bed, this is my bed. As you make your bed, after you finish shouting, yeah, 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 you will lie down on your bed the way you made it. Yes. If you see these 40 days, these 40 days, what, what is loaded in it? But the prayers, the teachings, it can be your best season ever. This is that season that can rewire and rewrite your destiny completely. 247, everything will change for you in a twinkle of an eye within 40 days. Yet, you will see how some people will play with it. Then on Sunday, they will come and uh, ah, religion in this country. As long as you go to church on Sunday, you think everything is all right. No, sir. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Look at verse 2. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Look at verse 4. Deliver the poor and needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. See verse 5, where my emphasis is. They know not, neither will they understand. This is a big problem. This is a big problem. When you come to that point in your life where knowledge is hard to get, where understanding is hard, is a big issue. Very big issue. <laughs> Can I give you one prayer point you should be praying every day? Father, please. Make my heart simple to receive truth. Because the entrance of the word giveth light to what? The simple. Father, make my heart so simplified. So that any time truth is coming, it can catch it with ease. Make my heart so open to knowledge. Then make me a lover of your ways and your principles and your truth. Make me a lover. Let me be excited every time. A teaching is going to come. Let me be excited every time something is going to be said to me that will help me move forward. If you see people who are bitter about the truth, watch their life. You can tell why what is happening is happening. Hello? What is this that I'm holding? What is it? Okay, let me even leave the mic. What is this that I'm holding? Eh? If I want to write, what's the simple law here? When I bought it, it was like this. I mean, do you know why they put it like this? So that air will not dry this thing. Eh? Because this thing is liquid inside. And if air touches it consistently, it may dry to affect it. All right? So they cover it. If I want to write, give me your book. Just stand it with it. If I want to write, show them. Watch, I want to write now. It's a pen, it can write. Is he writing anything? I use simple things to understand life. Is he writing anything? I think I'm writing. Is he writing anything? What is the law I need to respect? What do I need to do for this pen to write? Simple. I don't need prayer point. I don't need struggle. Just a little. It will write naturally. Just understand life from that angle. You struggle a lot and you don't need it. All this taking off here, coming back here, running there, coming here, move. You, you don't need too many things to succeed. One thing is... And Jesus said, Mary Magdalene, one thing 
He said, matter rather, one thing is needful. He said, your sister Mary has found it. That one who is sitting down at my feet and learning, Jesus said, that's the one who has found life. The one who is run up and down looking for how to cook food, looking for how to go and buy fuel, looking for how to go and fix that one, looking for how to go and run there. It's a sign of lack of growth. Two things affect your prosperity. Lack of growth and disobedience. I'll focus on the issue of disobedience because it's one of the things that fights the covenant. Disobedience. It's not the devil. It's disobedience. He that breaketh the hedge, the serpent will bite. You are always the one that will open the door for the devil to come in. He will never open the door on his own accord. That thing wounding you, that thing destroying your life, that thing is not the de- It's always you that will open. The devil's job is to bite. Your own is to break the hedge. Break it for him. How can the church be producing more poor people than you can own? Poverty capital in this country is the church. Because we do everything called religion, but we hardly give ourselves to issues of truth. Somebody can be coming late to church and walking normal. If you know the consequences in the Bible, that thing killed somebody. At least let the attitude be the attitude of oh repentance. You may not say, but you, the way you even come in will show that oh that person is repentant. That person feels bad for coming late. He knows who is coming to meet is God. Do you want to be a valuable person in this world? Then you have to build values into your life. Do you want to be a valuable person? You want to make yourself valuable? The way to make yourself valuable is to be a person of values. There's no other way else. You want to stand before kings and not mere men? You want to stand before men that matters in this world? You have to make yourself valuable. And you make yourself valuable largely by investing values into your life. I was coming to church and I saw one of our brethren walking on the streets, going home, perhaps to go and maybe pick something and start. If you see the way she was walking and pressing phone, I said, that's why this lady has, has not left where she is. You are praying. I wish we can stop praying in this church and start practicing. I wish we can stop doing religion. Let's remove all those religions and start doing more of practicing of what you are learning. If you see where your life will be. The reason people don't understand the church, and most people are giving up on the church, and most people are wondering, people are castigating church and saying all kinds of things against the church. The reason is because when they look at those who don't go to church, they seem more successful than those who are going. They seem more, and so what are you telling that guy who is doing well? A Christian leader who knows she's already late to, this is already getting to six past six, and if you see the way she's walking and pressing phone, that's a fool. No wonder Karl Marx said that religion is the opium of the masses. And it looks like what the man said is true. This religion thing is for failures. When a person is looking for reasons to justify why he can't make it, he comes to church. He comes to church. And sits down. And you'll be feeding. The person will be wasting time because he doesn't want to obey principle. So if your church is the only escape route, perhaps a miracle will just happen and then he will succeed. But if you read your Bible, you'll be seeing things like Caesar, a man, diligent, diligent, diligent. He will stand before kings and not members. You'll be seeing rules and laws. I don't know the one you see when you open your Bible. Let me tell you why I teach the truth. I don't teach the truth because I want you to be better. I teach the truth because it reviews my standard. If I water down the truth, it means I've watered down my standard. I don't need the truth to make you free. This is what is making me free. I will teach it to review to you myself. Every organization is a reflection of who is running it. 
this organization is not going to be a reflection of you. It's the man at the helm of affair. This is my standard. If you can't fit into it, the way it works, as the organization grows, it will sift you out. Organizations that end up pampering anyone who comes in the way they come, and, you know, just tell them lies and keep them, they suffer at the end of the day. Because you are going to end up having only fake, fake people, wrong, wrong people. But when you set your standards real well, the ones that can't fit in, we check out. Then the ones who are meant for it, as you hold that standard, they'll find you and come. Because when the fake one comes, they're coming to waste your time and to take that thing that is unique about you. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.